Good evening and welcome to this meeting of the Ashkash Area School District Board of Education. It is Wednesday, December 17th, 2014 at 6 p.m. as this meeting is properly noticed. Yes, Please call the roll. Dino? Here. Eliason? Here. Garner? Here. 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 Tonight we have two students from Franklin Elementary, Hunter Hounsell and uh, Charlie Zellhofer, who are going to uh, please come forward and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I tried not to pause in that thing. I know, I did too. I looked at you. Thank you very much for coming. I tried not to pause. I looked at you. Thank you very much. All right, uh, next. Uh, do we have uh, a report from the listening session? Yes, um, Mr. President, members of the board, um, uh, we have a report from uh, listening uh, session um, on uh, the third of um, of December. Uh, we had uh, seven uh, parents uh, approach the board to discuss concerns they have with um, uh, behavior at several grades at one of our elementary schools. Uh, the parents um, uh, shared uh, their concerns about uh, uh, the behavior in class, um, the uh, lessons being learned from inappropriate behavior, as well as um, uh, the concern about um, uh, the interruptions in learning that are affecting uh, their children as they report. Uh, since that time, we've had a number of meetings, including uh, uh, continued meetings with the parents and working individually with the parents involved to um, uh, respond to their concerns, uh, including uh, uh, meetings that uh, occurred last night. So we'll continue to be working on uh, trying to respond and uh, meet the expectations of those parents. Great. Glad to hear it. Um, we certainly were, we were still receiving emails about that this week yet. Uh, let's see. Superintendent's report? Sure. I trust I have a technology yep. to follow. Great. All right. <laughs> so, uh, first of all, congratulations to the Jacob Shapiro Brain Brace Laboratory Schools uh, Lego League team. Uh, the Brain Bots, uh, the Brain Bots concluded their first Lego League FLL season uh, with a performance to be proud of. Uh, FLL is a program that is used uh, uses exploration to get students ages 9 through 14 excited about science, engineering, and technology. Uh, this year, the theme of was world class, which uh, challenged students to create new and innovative ways to help others learn new information. There are three components to the challenge. The first one is the project component where students research, create, and share their innovative solution for the challenge. The second component is the robot game where students build and program a robot uh, to complete the tasks related to the challenge of, of using logos uh, and um, Legos. And the third uh, component is core values in which um, teamwork is showcased. And, uh, we have a um, large group of the team members uh, that have participated and done so well. Congratulations also to um, uh, on Teen Inc. Uh, Tracy Schulke, who has been published yet again in the December issue of T Teen Link, a journal sponsored by the nonprofit Young Authors Foundation. Uh, this is uh, this is Trace's fourth published piece in the magazine that re received submissions from around the world. Congratulations to Trace on this extraordinary accomplishment uh, that uh, that he makes it uh, look so easy. Holiday greetings from 4K students. 4K students at uh, Oak Brook site uh, made holiday cards for the residents of Gabriel's Village in Oshkosh. The children enjoyed decorating their cards, putting uh, their name writing skills to practical use uh, when they signed the cards for the residents. Oakwood Drive's food, dri uh, Oakwood's uh, food drive. Oakwood Elementary School was busy collecting and coordinating food to drive to help those in need in the Oshkosh community. Through a very generous donation from Oakwood families, they surpassed their goal of 500 items 
At the end of the food drive, they had gathered 3,131 items. The Oshkosh Kiwanis Club will be collecting these donations to share with citizens in the community. Uh, a friendly competition was held with the top three classrooms uh, uh, totals were Mr. Shugel's uh, fourth grade, 351 items, uh, Miss, Mrs. Quasi's uh, fourth grade, 341, and Miss, Ms. Heinemann's fifth grade, uh, 305 items. Special thanks to Ms. Heidemann and her fifth grade class and to Mr. Jason McGrower uh, as custodian for all their help in collecting boxes and tabulating the items collected. Uh, UWO students uh, learning with elementary students. The lighted schoolhouse at Webster Stanley uh, Ameline Cook and Washington Elementary Schools participated uh, with the University Studies Program at the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh uh, the uh, college sophomores came in for weekly, um, weekly in their Quest 3 focus on immersing college students in real life experiences uh, while benefiting from the communities and organizing uh, those who act as partners the course emphasizes intercultural knowledge and competence asking signature question how do people understand and bridge the cultural difference students made webs or trees uh, showing their connection to people in their lives, uh, paper quilts themed around things that are important to them, uh, wrote and performed memories, danced with uh, uh, Cumbia, and created their own shadow puppet performances. Participants had the opportunity to share their work with parents, teachers, and other UWO faculty, staff, and students. Each school hosted a showcase, and families were invited to the university wide Quest 3 showcase on the UWO comp campus in Reeve Union on Friday, December 5th. Carl Traeger uh, students give back during the holiday seasons. Uh, student council members from Carl Traeger Middle School help the Salvation Army load gifts for their adoptive family program. Uh, students participated in a coin battle to raise funds to purchase gifts. They raised $985.60 um, for this project. A thank you to Oshkosh ABC Knitters and Crocheters, the fifth graders at Jacob Shapiro Brain Based Instructional Laboratory School, uh, signed the anti-bullying pledge and taking charge of being role models and leaders in their schools. The students discussed what it means to be a leader and how to lead the way to school through the school community, how to stand up to bullies and how to assist students who have been bullied. Each fifth grade student received a scarf from the ABC Knitters and Crocheters of Oshkosh. The students discussed how these scarves are a reminder of the symbol of someone in the community doing something kind for, other, for them and how they pay it forward by being leaders and advocates in the school community. Thanks again for the ABC Knitters and Crocheters. I believe this is the second year in a row that this mm -hmm. activity has taken place and we're very thankful for that. Uh, Roosevelt students celebrating their reading challenge. Congratulations to the students at Roosevelt Elementary School. The student body and staff were challenged to read 50,000 minutes during the book fair week. If um, the goal was met, it meant uh, egg relay, uh, roulette uh, for the interim principal, Mr. Peter uh, Cernius, and, um, and lucky staff member, Mrs. Um, James. Uh, way to go, students and staff. Um, the total minutes were logged were 57,878. And a big thank you to um, uh, Mr. Cernos and uh, Mrs. James. Um, I can just imagine how Mr. Cernos appreciated doing that. <laughs> it is just fun to think about. Uh, Carl Traeger Elementary um, Art Program received donations on December 8th. Uh, Edsel Labotus uh, donated a check for $100 to Carl Traeger Elementary Art Department. He, uh, he won the funds by creating the best costume during the 80s theme day at work. His employer, Dealer Fire, generously awarded $100 to Edsel uh, to be given to his favorite nonprofit organization. Edsel had been practice, is a practicing artist for Oshkosh for many years and a strong supporter of the arts in the community. He thought, uh, thought of Traeger's art department and with, was a great recipient for the award. Uh, Edsel's daughter is in Mrs. Nyam's fifth grade class and she is shown here in the photo. Uh, Traeger's school is an, it was excited to announce that Edsel will be returning to the school as a visiting artist in February through funds provided by the SOAR program uh, and uh, Traeger's parent group. So a big thank you for that effort once again.
Oshkosh West High School uh, presents a service award uh, uh, last, um, actually last Friday night. Uh, each, um, each year the Wisconsin Athletic Directors Association provide each WIAA member school with a service award. The award was presented to a person or organization who has provided outstanding service uh, to its high school's athletic department. This year, uh, Oshkosh West High School is pleased to present it to Mr. Mike Hill. Uh, Mike has taught the um, Oshkosh School District for 21 years, 18 of those years at Oshkosh West as a special education teacher and as a credit recovery coordinator uh, of the Learning Lab. For more than 10 years, Mike has served as a game worker for West in, in football, volleyball, boys and girls soccer, boys and girls basketball, wrestling, uh, boys and girls swimming, and boys and girls track. His duties have ranged from being a timer, scorer, event manager, and most notably serving as the voice of the Wildcats Cats as our announcer. Uh, the West Athletic Department is extremely grateful to Mike's dedication and support for the many different Wildcat athletic activities. I don't think that um, uh, that Mike must have any evening at home with all those activities. Um, probably only Wednesday. So, <laughs> making a difference. Uh, students from New Start and Second Chance have been volunteering their time in the community to help others uh, this holiday season, from decorating a celebration of lights to ringing bells for the Salvation Army and helping residents of Parkview. These alternative students are working hard to make the community even better. Giving back while learning at Oakwood uh, during the holiday season, Oakwood students felt it was important to help others who were in need of a little assistance. Mrs. Duff, so Oakwood school counselor, worked with the Salvation Army to uh, adopt three families. She and her son, Nolan, an Oshkosh West freshman, put together a tree and ornaments that the listing uh, what the families requested. Uh, the second grade classes at Oakwood decided that instead of having their traditional school supply exchange in their classroom, a nice showing of Oakwood spirit would be to purchase some items from the tree to help the families. One of the second grade um, benchmarks is to help individuals with responsibility uh, uh, to family, peers, and the community. This was a great opportunity uh, to help the community while trying to get, uh, get it back to the classroom. Green Meadow Elementary School, Mrs. Shears and Mr. Uh, Mrs. R Ms. Rupplinger's class field trip uh, to the Payne Art Center. Uh, we went uh, during the Nutcracker at the castle and every room was decorated with Christmas trees. Uh, there was carvings of leaves, trees, and pine cones. They were uh, the upstairs, uh, up, upside down trees too. It was uh, really beautiful and uh, they would love um, for others to be able to see it. Last, uh, almost second, lastly, it is the season for giving. Uh, Tipler students uh, shop for gifts for sick children at Milwaukee's uh, Children's Hospital. Students from Mrs. Weisey's um, and Mr. LeBire's uh, resource class went shopping to get holidays in the holiday spirit. They shopped at Walmart searching for the perfect gifts to give to children at the Milwaukee Children's Hospital. Uh, the students worked on various social skills, riding, city transportation, spending a limited amount of money, and most of all, thinking about others uh, who are less fortunate. Students showed a great deal of empathy and thought thoughtfulness in choosing their gifts. Some found ways to spread, uh, spread their money out to buy many gifts. Uh, to reach more uh, students and uh, more children, uh, while others uh, found one big gift and they hoped would brighten the uh, sick child's holiday. Uh, when they returned to school, the students wrapped the gifts and made cards to accompany the presents. What a nice way for students to give back and be reminded that they have uh, much to be thankful for, especially for their good health. And the Webster Stanley Skate Club um, uh, uh, kicked off on December 4th. We used to have ice, uh, and uh, we will hopefully get it back again, but for a few days we did have, uh, you know, with an all-school all school assembly, Dr. Eric uh, Smidek, um, along with uh, Steve Ellison and um, uh, Dave, um, Nate Lerner, and Olympic speed skater, uh, Christina Lerner, uh, led the assembly. 46 elementary students participated in skating after school the first night, and 82 participants uh, the second night. We will be hearing more about this activity um, in January when hopefully we have more snow and more ice. <laughs> so, Lakeside and Green Meadow, good news. Lakeside and Green Meadow teachers have been meeting during the early release collaborations to work on their school improvement goals um, of narrative writing. Teachers have been scoring students' work in teams based on the Lucy Calkins unit of 
study rubric and that the district adopted this year. Teachers are, are able to use this information to get the uh, get from the assessment to improve individual student learning by choosing meaningful next steps uh, for students to take as writers. And lastly, you'll find the list of activities um, uh, of the superintendent in the last uh, two-week period. Um, last night, I attended my 13th of 15th elementary uh, concert. Um, we have one more tomorrow night and one more on on uh, Monday night, and we will have the full da of, um, of elementary concerts. And last night was a double dose with an outstanding performance by Oshkosh North High School's uh, choirs as well. So uh, with joy, um, we uh, celebrate the season. Thank you, Mr. Mack. And thank you, Mr. Eliasson, and uh, all the team you pulled together for uh, the skating club. You bet. Uh, at this point, uh, I would like to ask uh, Walter Scott uh, and Sue Panek to come forward. They represent the Oshkosh Civility Project. Uh, Scotty and Sue uh, are going to be, uh, uh, please come forward, and uh, they're going to be uh, uh, presenting uh, a special announcement this evening. We can stay on this, okay? Yeah, actually, right. I have to speak in the mic. All right, you need the mic, okay. Thank you, Stan. <coughs> Excuse me, thank you, Matthew. The Oshkosh Civility Project is about four years old now, and as uh, we have a plaque we want to present this evening, first of all, we feel right at home when we see our poster at the, on your wall behind <laughs> you. And I thought the, the first sentence of the civility report here on our plaque was very appropriate to the presentation you made, because we're not here because Oshkosh is not a civil home. We are a civil place. In fact, we say we're a community that is known for offering a high quality of life and a high quality of interpersonal interaction. And certainly that report certainly shows that. But we decided uh, even though the NFL season is not over, we're going to name a champion tonight. There's two weeks left to go in that season, but we know tonight who a champion is, and that's your superintendent of schools, Stan Mack. Right. And we have a plaque we'd like to present to you, Stan, as a champion of civility. So if you come forward, we'd appreciate right. it. Mm -hmm. Just wondering what, so, what you were doing here. This is a total surprise. Well, we were hard with Sherry to make you wonder. <laughs> so that's, that's I'd, I'd like to, to read this, it's very brief, but it said, uh, Citation for Special Recognition Champion of Civility presented to Stan F. Mack the second. As superintendent of the Oshkosh Area School District, Mr. Mack has consistently demonstrated adherence to the principles, practices, and the promise of civility. In so doing, he has attracted public support for the schools, improved the environment for teaching and learning excellence. He is generous in his time to support many important volunteer and community-based efforts and unfailing in his commitment to civic growth and advancement. Mr. Mack is representative of the high standards of interpersonal communication and conduct that make Oshkosh known for our shared commitment to civility. Stand is truly I, and I, I marvel every time, it seems like everywhere I go in Oshkosh at some event, there's Stan. Yeah. <laughs> and when I heard your report of all the schools, uh, it truly shows your interest in our community. And we thank you. The only way I can do the job is by being everywhere and keeping in touch. I might just so. add, Sue is with me this evening, but also on our committee, Mindy Boyden, uh, Mandy Potts, Margie Davey, and of course, Tom Grogan and Kim Peterman. And they all send their greetings. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much, and thank you for the presentation. Surprise, Dan. Yeah, that was a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> I, I right. don't like surprises at board meetings. So <laughs> <laughs> well, we couldn't really get around this one, I'm afraid. Are there uh, other committee reports? Steve. Um, policy and governance met on the 8th. Um, we went through a number of items. Uh, first off, uh, 223.2 Administrative Development Opportunities. We decided to send back to New York uh, to restructure and give us a finished product on it. 
Uh, six were asked for more information uh, before we decide to move forward with them. These were policies, many of which we do not currently have, uh, policies such as controversial issues in the classroom, religion and curriculum, uh, human growth and development, uh, freedom of speech in non-instructional settings, uh, student activism, commemoration of school facilities, religious and patriotic ceremonies, things that we do not currently have. And we discuss it in depth. Do we want these type of policies? Is it a good procedure to have these in place prior to needing them in place? And we thought it was better to be proactive on these, so we pushed forward with them. Uh, some of the ones we asked for more information was on advertising and commercial activities. Uh, the weapons policies, there's like four or five of them. We're wondering if we actually need to have four or five weapon policies or can they be all combined into one policy, that kind of stuff. So um, that's pretty much it for policy and governance. All right. Thank you, Allison. Facilities and Finance met on December 11th and we had a brief up update on Oakland spending. Essentially, um, we're still continuing to look at storage issues. There are no uh, major outstanding fixes left uh, at Oakland. Um, and then there was a question about removing snow from the soft surface on the new playground there and um, the custodian or um, the head maintenance uh, person said that that's not possible because you would ruin. So <coughs> right now kids aren't allowed to play on it so that was kind of a bummer. Uh, Lakeside project update, there was no update at that time but then we had a workshop last week so I think we were waiting for all of that. Um, Superintendent Mack indicated that the PTO is interested in upgrading the playground and providing lockers to all the students um, and he stated that the PTO should not have to raise funds for lockers and would rather see them focus on the playground equipment. So we're trying to figure out how we're going to pay for some of this stuff for the new, for the new part of the school. Um, the custodial work order system is up and running and so far the feedback has been positive. The system will be opened up to the entire district, I think next month, I'm not sure. They'll be doing a demo for everybody. Um, the requests are first sent to the um, custodians and if they're not able to do the work then it gets passed along and there's a, I'm sure a matrix on how that all works, but they really like it. Elementary concerns, the additional Phi Ed teachers. Um, we had a meeting late summer and the ele elementary task force presented that they um, would like to have an additional fight ed period. I don't know if you guys remember, but um, currently we have two 25 minute fight ed periods that are um, taught by fight ed teachers, but then there's an additional third fight ed period that are to be taught by our teachers, and it's been in practice for forever, and nobody can really remember when it started, but it was probably a budget issue. Um, and so the elementary school teachers have said that they would like to have those 25 minutes back, and how would it be possible to get those 25 minutes of FIED minutes back to the, to the elementary school teachers and then let the FIED teachers somehow take over that third um, period. So the things that have been done so far is uh, we did push the elementary early release time to 1.35 with the 20 to 25 minutes being given back to elementary teachers for prep time. That's once a month. Every Wednesday from 3 to 4 there was collaboration, so pushing that to 3.15. Uh, they pushed that to 3.15 to give them additional prep time and arranging specialists so that there are chunks of time during the school day. Um, they're still discussing um, ways to the, where they could maybe tr work with organizing the schedule. It was noted that four additional FIAD teacher or FTE would cost about $280,000. In addition, paraprofessionals would need to be paid an additional cost of $71,500 for a total cost of $350,000, about $350,000 to be able to, to do the FIAD with FIAD teachers. Um, and then there will be some other issues. For example, Carl Traeger Elementary doesn't have room for the additional FIAD time. So we'll, we'll have some hurdles coming with that, um, but we'll, we're still working on it. If it does happen, it'll be Im implemented next fall. Uh, we want to wait. Sushnor um, said that she would like to see that we should wait to see what the budget, the state budget comes back with, see what kind of money we're looking at. Um, she is expecting no new money next year, so that maybe she might be surprised pleasantly if there is more. So. There was a concern uh, as to how this request fits into the big picture and before agreeing we'd like to see what other needs are coming forward as always, you know, same pot of money, there's lots of needs. Another thing to keep in mind is that if the start times are changed back, the transportation savings will then get eaten up. So that's another thing that we need to 
think about. Next meeting is scheduled for January 20th at 8 a.m. All right, thank you very much. Any other reports? Education Committee met on Thursday, December 11th. It's a busy meeting day, it seems like. Yeah. Um, we had three um, ISTs here from across the district to give us an overview on what the ISTs do and how that job, that position is evolving. Um, it was um, a delightful overview. Um, everyone learned a lot. Um, the group talked about the challenges of finding, of, of finding the fit between ISTs that it, it's a required, it's kind of a collaboration of content knowledge and skills, which is um, difficult to find, soft skills, um, high tolerance for ambiguity, and because the position encompasses so many different facets, um, a person in that position can be very kind of overwhelmed and um, it can take them over if there's not boundaries in place because the needs are so high and there's, um, not really enough ISTs that they can get soaked up very quickly by all the demands. Um, and so it was interesting to learn about all of that. Um, as the program matures and grows and with the high turnover rates, um, the need for support is going to be increasingly critical. Then we also, then Julie Mosier led us in a presentation around equal versus equitable in an effort to help us define equity um, in education around goal 4A. Um, we did an exercise to kind of begin to flesh out our core beliefs um, around equity and equal and equitable. Keep those two words mixed up. Um, and so that took us up to the time. Um, and so the next meeting, which everyone's invited to come to and join in the exercise, <laughs> is to find answers to questions about, you know, kind of what is our guiding light around equal versus equitable? Um, where do we want to move with that? Um, are there changes that are required in our vision statement, our mission statement, and our beliefs um, around equal versus equitable? And when putting things in place and planning, how does that impact our, our guiding light? And so it was, it was quite um, a lively discussion and exercise. We discussed next meeting date, dates and we decided on Thursday, January 29th at 9 a.m. And that will be a continuation of this discussion? Yes. Okay. Yes. So that, I think that would be fabulous if you could be there since it involves such a big part of our foundation. Thank you. Other reports? All right, seeing none, uh, we'll move on to non-agenda related public forum. Is there anyone who wishes to speak tonight on the subject which is not on tonight's agenda? All right, seeing none, we'll move on to agenda related public forum. Is there anyone who wishes to speak tonight on an item that is on tonight's agenda? All right, seeing none, we'll move on to the consent resolution agenda. Um, if you emailed me this at late this afternoon, I didn't have a chance to check my email before I came in, so. Uh, if there's anything you wish to pull, um, please do so. For the consent agenda, the board has been furnished with background material on each item or has discussed it at a previous meeting. These will be acted upon with one vote without discussion. If a board member wants to discuss any item, it will be pulled out of the consent agenda and will be voted on separately. The board will consider approval of. Is there anything anyone wishes to Bob? Number seven, please. Seven. Anything else? Oh, seeing none. All right, the board will consider approval of minutes of November 19th, 2014, regular board meeting. Number two, minutes of December 3rd, 2014, regular board meeting. Number three, bills payable. Number four, personnel. A, appointments, temporary appointments, resignations, retirements, and salary schedule. Number five, revisions to policy 374, student fundraising activities. Number six, revisions to policy 537, professional growth development. Number eight, revisions to rule 223.1, administrator compensation and benefits. Number nine, proposal, uh, proposed individual administrator salary adjustments. Number 10, high school assessment calendar modifications for 2014-15 school year. Number 11, authorization to obtain bids for the Lakeside edition. Number 12, interagency agreement with the city of Oshkosh and Winnebago County for the near site clinic. Number 13, proposed food service salary structure. Number 14, proposed 
proposed professional salary structure. So more yeah. professional, excuse me, salary structure. Is there a second? All right. Please call the roll. Kerner? Aye. Kerner, aye. Herzog? Aye. Herzog, aye. Lumberger? Aye. Lumberger, aye. Saganak? Aye. Saganak, aye. Wiedenhoff? Aye. Wiedenhoff, aye. Vito? Aye. Vito, aye. Elias? Aye. Elias, aye. Motion carried. Resolution number seven, be it resolved that the Ashkosh Area School District Board of Education approve the employment of administrative substitutes policy 270 as a new board policy as filed with the Secretary to the Board of Education. So moved. Second. The reason that I that I asked for this to be pulled this evening is that upon further review, um, Mr. Nault and I discovered that there were a couple of things that needed to be tweaked in there. Uh, there was a, um, well, there were just some small tweaks that we would like to postpone the vote on this until January, and then bring it back for the board's consideration at that time. Uh, could you put that in the form of a motion to uh, uh, yes. not lay aside, but a motion to uh, postpone? postpone? I move to postpone the motion uh, number seven, the addition of policy 270. <laughs> it is, it's 270. <laughs> Unemployment of, of uh, administrator substitutes until the January meeting. Could I get a second on that? Second. Any further conversation? Please call the roll. Herzog? Aye. Herzog, aye. Lumberger? Aye. 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 All right. Number 15, be it resolved that the Ashkosh Area School District Board of Education hereby direct the Wasby delegate to uh, support resolutions forwarded to all Wasby members prior to the convening of the assembly. Be it further resolved that the Wasby delegate is directed to vote on amendments or resolutions that arise from the floor of the delegate assembly in a manner that is consistent with the position of the original resolution as filed as Secretary to the Board of Education on December 17, 2014 in accordance with the rules, regulations, and policies of the Board of Education. So moved. Second. <coughs> Discussion? Did everyone get a chance to read these? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes? Okay. All right. No discussion. Please call the roll. Lumberger? Aye. Lumberger, aye. Saganak? Aye. Saganak, aye. Wiedenhoff? Aye. Wiedenhoff, aye. Vito? Aye. Vito, aye. Eliason? Aye. Eliason, aye. Garner? Aye. Garner, aye. Herzog? Aye. Herzog, aye. All right. Um, are there any items that people wish to put on the agenda? Any future agenda items? I don't see none. Uh, announcements? Mr. Hey, did you want to say anything about Susan? Sure. Yes. Thank you. Um, I just, um, for purposes of updating the board and um, our executive team uh, present this evening, uh, the latest information we shared uh, by way of um, uh, Teresa Collins, who has done an excellent job of communicating with um, uh, John, uh, Sue's husband, um, well, the last information this afternoon probably came to you about 10 minutes to 6 or quarter to 6, uh, was um, uh, that uh, Sue continues to make positive progress. Um, uh, contained in there were uh, several highlights. Um, she's down to having only one one tube coming to her um, that uh, come into her and making progress. She's uh, relegated to um, um, only uh, eating applesauce and um, she is um, um, very pleased with um, all long-term memory is all perfect and working. Okay. She's a little frustrated with uh, short-term memory, uh, but well, working on that, <laughs> that issue. I, I was thinking that all of us have a little bit of that. We remember things in detail, but progress there. Um, uh, tomorrow, um, uh, they expect that she'll be able to um, sit up and um, make progress in that way. And um, uh, and uh, uh, internal to the uh, central office here, uh, we have an, a gift exchange program of a secret Santa um, activity that um, everybody, uh, most everybody participates in and uh, you during a three-week period or four-week period uh, um, have mysterious gifts appear at your desk um, um, during that period of time uh, Sue is uh, her memory is um, whether it's long or short term uh, she is asking whether or not um, the um, uh, Secret Santa will find her in Milwaukee um, so uh, that's an that's a excellent sign and uh, and we're um, and uh, Teresa is arranging to make sure that uh, a special delivery that uh, arrives at her desk which then will get transmitted to John, her husband, which will make sure that Secret Santa will find her in Milwaukee. So that is, is underway. I should also 
inform you that um, through the auspices of some excellent internal suggestions as well as external um, sources, um, uh, 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 Teresa and um, Mike Nault and I, I will be visiting with a, um, a potential um, uh, short-term substitute um, for whatever length on, um, on Friday um, and a very experienced retired um, uh, uh, school business official um, who um, uh, knows Sue would uh, be uh, from all the sources and I checked references all afternoon today and found nothing but absolute positive on this individual and uh, uh, we will be um, uh, planning to engage a person um, uh, we have no idea of the length of time we'll not be able to speak to that but um, uh, but uh, dealing with um, providing coverage uh, in the business office during the interim period and um, we can uh, fully recognize that we're probably uh, eight weeks to 12 weeks potentially, but um, um, and um, I also wanted to be sure to find somebody that um, uh, Sue had trust and confidence in uh, so that um, they can work together um, either remotely or um, in any way that uh, will accomplish the goals of the district. And I'm very pleased um, that um, uh, the person I talked to today was uh, most willing to um, uh, discuss uh, doing this, was interested, and, uh, and from a third source um, uh, uh, who I had contacted, who made the contact with him, it was kind of delightful. Delightful. The individual called me back 30 minutes later and said, um, has he called you yet? Um, that's how excited he was potentially to work with us. And um, since that time, uh, I've had four other contacts from school business officials retired around the state who know Sue, respect Sue, mm -hmm. and who have expressed interest in helping us out if necessary. So mm -hmm. it's wonderful to have that reputation um, um, with uh, school business officials in the state. So. Um, uh, I can tell you that today was a whole lot better than the first three days this week. So, uh, thank you. Well, we wish you a speedy recovery. Mm -hmm. uh, other announcements? Could I get a motion to adjourn to executive session of four? Purposes of considering the disciplinary data of specific persons under 19.851F of Wisconsin State Statutes, A, review expulsion recommendation from expulsion hearing officer for a high school student who either, uh, excuse me, who, uh, engaged in conduct while under the supervision of a school authority which endangered the property, health, or safety of others under 120.13C of Wisconsin State Statutes. So moved. Second. Call the roll. Segment? Aye. Segment, Aye. 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 Aye.